welcome to Real Talk. My name is Emma Wookie. And my name is Rach Lamb. In today's episode of Real Talk, our VT host Molly goes around asking West Hart students what their steps are for leaving college. That's lovely. Then we will head over to our Barnfield campus where our host Eden will be talking about an upcoming film and arts festival in Luton. Nice. Mm -hmm. Then to join us on the sofa for this episode will be ex-student Lewis Dolan. We will be talking to him about working at one of the top London post-production mm. houses and where they edit some of the best TV shows. Wow. Then we will have quick talk where we share four important stories for young people. Then, to end the show, we have Valentine from live in the studio. It's, it's real, real talk. talk. In 2022 and 2023, academic year ends in May and June this year, and students are now starting to realise that adulthood is just around the corner. I'm not ready. No. But we've sent our VC host Molly around the college campus asking students what their plans are for after leaving college and whether they're excited for their next step into a career or further education. Yeah. Starts college asking first years and second years alike what their plans are after college and whether they're going to universities or apprenticeships or going straight into the, the deep end of the pool in the career path. Thank you. Okay, what is your name and what course are you on? I'm Zane and I'm doing level four music production. I'm Sienna and I do makeup. That is interesting. Uh, my name is Harvey Sangara and I'm on the uh, level three film and TV course. Great. Uh, my name's Jean and I'm doing forensic psychology. I'm Eloise and I'm on the film and TV course. Snazzy. Um, what are your next steps after leaving college? After leaving, I'd try to go into some more live sound. I've been doing a lot of that this year and I'm going to do some more next year before I head off. I'm going to work full time. I've applied for a couple of universities as backup, but I'm looking at apprenticeships or going straight into the industry. I'm going to do a police apprenticeship with Hertfordshire Police. Hopefully go to university, yeah. Yeah, I said that's a good decision. Is there any particular reason why you've decided to do this? I've just been really enjoying it. So um, in my first year, it got cut off a bit because of COVID. So we had to kind of set back on some of the live stuff. But now we're back in the swing of things. It's been really fun. I don't feel ready to go into the workplace yet. I'm not going to lie. It's too scary. I don't feel completely ready for it. And I feel like I want to like develop my skills just, just a bit more. Uh, just because it, it interests me. Uh, I think I've wanted to be, a police, be in the police since I was little. So, yeah. What unis have you applied for? Um, so Salford, um, UAL, um, Norwich, Bournemouth and Bristol. Queen Mary, Kent, Salford, uh, York and London Film School, I believe. How have West Hearts helped you figure out your dream career? They've basically given me a shot at music when I never really had one before because I couldn't play any instruments or anything, so it was kind of... It wasn't even on the field of anything I could do. Um, uh, yeah, like I said, I think I've known since I was little that I wanted to do it, but learning about uh, the forensic and crime scenes and stuff like that has definitely reassured the fact that that's, I know what I want to do. I don't know. They just showed me like what I could be passionate about and I became passionate about it. And they're like, go off and do this. And I was like, fair enough, I will do. How much will you miss West Hearts after leaving? Oh, so much. Like I've made so many like great friends here and like the tutors are lovely and I just... It's going to be sad when I leave. Probably won't get emotional, but it'll definitely be a bit a bit sad leaving. Quite a lot, to be honest, because the facilities here are great and so are the people. Yeah, I'd miss it. I mean, the class is it's quite a nice class. Uh, everyone's kind of all on the same part. As you can see, we had a good mix of people that were continuing the course or going into apprenticeships and going to unis and even going straight into the workforce. Thanks, Sienna, for that. Um, and I'll see you back in the studio. <laughs> So, Molly, how was it? Was it all okay? Yeah, we had, um, usually it's tricky getting people to, to do it, but we had quite a few people that were just like, no, I'll, I'll do it, I'll do it. Yeah. <laughs> so I was quite interested. There's one kid who volunteered. He's part of the forensic science course, Yeah. which I was quite interested in. Oh. So obviously you were talking to people about what they're doing next. What are you doing next? What's the plan? Well, I've got drama school auditions and university auditions to get through first. Gosh. But, um, oh, so further education. Pain. Yeah. And then maybe after Where that. Where have you applied to then? Back. Um, well, I did, you know, auditions, so it's not really mm. like applying and sending in a personal statement. It's like, gotcha. got to go there. Mm -hmm. That's me. And then do all the dancing. <laughs> yeah. What do you want to go to? Mm. Chichester University 
or MPAA, mm. which is in Bushy, so it's not too far. Yeah. Have you done any auditions yet? What I did a meal. Like? I did one at a meal deal. What kind um, of a meal deal? A meal, <laughs> a meal deal. That's what we call it. Um, a meal deal. It's in Hitchin. Is that like a really well known like school it's, or is it? It's newer. Um, so, really like it. <laughs> so oh. you're you're nearly finishing your course here. What has been your favourite moment on like the musical theatre course you've been doing? That um, hard? Come on, that, mate. come Give on! You must have enjoyed it. There's, there's a lot of moments. It's a great Just, school. There's a lot Did of you, moments. Favorite yeah. show? Favorite moment? Favorite yeah. character played? Favorite anything? I mean, so far one of my favorite. Like it was, it was probably the easiest time because I was just starting first year. Aww. But it was doing Back in the company beginning. with the second years because we team hmm. up with the both years combined for the FMP gotcha. show. So, you've got so a we big, didn't carry this yeah. year. So that's something oh, to look cool. forward to. Yeah. Who are you playing? Sue. Lovely. How has the musical theatre course helped you like for your visions of progression into your career? Well, ever since year six primary school, I've been sort yeah. of interested in the performance. Mm musical theatre, stuff along that lines, media, anything to do yeah. with that. And it's not, it's not really something that's, it's given me a sort of wider knowledge of musicals in general, yeah. because you don't really, unless you're absolutely mad about musicals, mm. it, when you're doing forming arts secondary school, you don't really know. Yeah. Well, apart from the big famous ones like Hamilton and Wicked, yeah. you don't know the, the other little gems. The little ones that are little. like off, off Broadway, yeah. off, off West End, yeah. So obviously there's not long left now. So it's to scare you guys, I know you're uni gals, I mean, but um, <laughs> what, the FMP, Carrie show, like what, who are you playing? Are you excited? Mm. Like what's, what's I, it looking like? Um, I'm playing Sue, who is... Gone, Sue. <laughs> <laughs> Love you, Sue. Main character, one of the main characters. Um, I'm doing it with Jess, actually, who you met oh, earlier. Nice. Oh, so nice. Jess. So, Big up, Jess. Um, yeah. <laughs> special mention. But, uh, there's going to be a lot of blood, a lot of gore. So, it's what a class does best. <sighs> it's the advice section. Yeah, you've come got. On. Dig we're, deep, we're, Molly. we're little, we're little year 11s right we now. Are. Give us some advice. What should we do if we're going to come to this college and do musical theatre? I'd say, in I mean, if you're going to come to this college anyway, in general, pick something that you actually want to do instead of something that you think's going to sort of just get you through college. Mm. Because I mean, I was in drama before I came to musical theatre. Oh, just right. wasn't. Not quite the same. It wasn't is it? hitting the same. No. So you know, if you do something you actually want to do, then you you know you got to put in the work. Put yourself out yeah. there. Do Everything's it. better when like yeah. you love it. You want to be there. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. Sure that. Oh, thank you so much, Molly. Yeah, thank you for coming. See you next week. It's all, it's your last one next week. Oh it's our it. last one next week. Oh, anyways, it's anyways, we're we'll getting emotional last week. <laughs> thank you so much, and we'll see you next week. <laughs>
you know everybody feels comfortable to you know come and enjoy some art music and just really learn from each other and maybe make some new connections as well. Country wants to bring attention to Newton um, in any way possible. Um, So that is an eight week course for young people. It's basically a breakdown to show sort of people, well young people of your kind of learning learning level and slightly above about the kind of event arrangement aspect of these film events and like what are the ingredients that you actually need to put together an event. We have an event coming up on the Thursday the 30th, which is not next week but the following week. So we've invited the filmmakers down, we've got three shorts that are showing and we also have our press night as well. So we'll be inviting sort of a couple of people down just to give people just to give an audience a taste of what's going on. In terms of what's coming up, generic answers, it's gonna be exciting. Uh, but I, I actually deal with mostly the social media aspect and the music aspect and on that front there's a lot of interesting artists that are going to be performing. So they're not just artists from Newton, there's some artists from London as well. And um, we're going to capture the whole day visually. So in order to get involved with these three, we just have to uh, just, 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 just show up. Then, um, with the new film program, I feel like that's almost like a steady way to actually working with the festival. Um, just because I think that I've moved into a space now Interesting cases. Uh, ben, when he was starting to do he was talking to uh, myself, uh, our man, and we were together for breaking down. And Megan actually was involved. Uh, but Ben was asking about stuff, and I didn't have the time to do it. So I was like, hey, you should do you know, Megan, you should do it well. Uh, Megan, of course, kind of gave me a response for a while. Uh, but on the day, she just showed up in the first one. Our sofa guest for this episode is ex film and TV student Lewis Dolan, who studied level three film and TV, as well as working on season four of Real Talk. <laughs> Since leaving West Hearts, he's joined the popular post-production house company, Envy, mm -hmm. as a post-production runner and training sound editor. He's going to share what life has been like for him since leaving and joining the rapidly growing UK film and TV industry. So, Lewis, thank you for coming and joining us here. Um, what is it like working at Envy and what is it exactly that you do? So currently it is very busy, as you would expect. It's yeah. film and TV, always on the... On, <laughs> always on, hustle on, and bustle. Yeah, always. Yep. <laughs> currently I'm working post-production runner, so it's kind of like hospitality. Don't know yeah. how much kind of experience everyone, anyone has, but also do training here and there. Got like two hours a week I'm available to do. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's going really well. That sounds like amazing. So obviously you were a Wasco winner in the summer. Oh. So <laughs> talk us through it. What's your day to day looking like now? You've gone from war school winner to back to the bottom of the pyramid. What does your day, day look like? My days. So uh, Monday to Friday usually right now, but the occasional weekend here and there. I'm um, just coming and coming in, <clears> doing my shifts. <throat> like this week, I've been working seven to three, waking up five, commuting to London, and just Where kind of in London, are you? literally mm. just probably like the most central kind of London you can get oh, in gosh. Soho next. <laughs> oh. next Oh, Next that's it, Soho. Yeah. Soho. How's the hustle and bustle? How's going and travelling, commuting to London every day? So it takes about an hour to get there. Just yeah. It's kind of standard. Still take the same train line, just the opposite easy, way. Easy. Like North was kind of where I did my education, South yeah. where I do my work. So have you met any famous people yet? Which is obviously what is most Ooh. important. No one wants to know what you do, Lewis. God, <laughs> have you met anyone met? <laughs> So there's two kind of standout people, I'd say. They're, you might not know the name, but Greg Davis, I've met, mm -hmm. who formerly known as Mr. Gilbert in, in Between Us. Mm -hmm. 
He, what a legend. Yeah. Oh, kind what's of, he like? Is he, like, is he a bit of a geezer? <laughs> he's massive height and... Oh, like he looks in the in-between. Yeah, and... <laughs> Hasn't changed. Like, I was just sitting on reception during our reception. It's kind of lunch. Yeah. And he just kind of comes in, just he barely fits through the oh door. God. Like, when one of my kind of co-workers had to go into his office, he has to, like, kind of duck every time. But didn't really speak to him, though, like, only mm. briefly. Yeah, and that's also, really cool. Also, at the start, Stanley Tucci was yeah. also a lad, a uh, quite famous actor. Mm. I didn't really talk to him too much, but <laughs> I, my co-workers said, would say stories. Do you, do you get the opportunity to talk to them, or is it kind of like they, they walk in and out? They walk in and out. You kind yeah. of, respectfully, you yeah. only talk to them if they kind mm. of talk to you, because, you know, they're just kind of there yeah. to kind of view and then leave. Of course. And can you tell us what your plans are at MV? Is there anywhere for you to move up? What is the plan? So currently... Uh, as a runner, you're allowed to have training. We have this thing called Envy Academy. So we're allowed oh, yeah. two hours of pay training every week. So during my kind of shifts, I'm allowed to take an hour out of the day. And for me, I like to go into audio. So I'm, kind of, I'm training there, doing jobs, mm. and just kind of waiting for a trial or an and an opportunity just to come up. Waiting to get your nose in the door. Yeah. That is, yeah. That sounds so cool. And how did um, West Hearts College prepare you for this? Because obviously it's a bit daunting going into the industry straight away. What kind of things did this college give you to prepare? I'd say the thing that helped the most massively was how to get in. Mm. I feel like that's something that's not really taught as much. It's more yeah. what to do when you get in. Whereas mm. here, massively, it helps me out with like the B1 course, which is... Oh, don't talk about B1. B1. No, no, no. <laughs> what a project that but was. How did you do it? How did you get in? How did you I just kind of, find your way in? Since kind of, I only spent about three months of doing nothing, but just applying and yeah. just always looking on like LinkedIn and just kind of saw an overnight runner job for Envy, which I thought, you know, night shift, yeah. not everyone's ideal yeah. cup of tea, but if it meant, if it means... Getting your foot in the yeah, door, exactly. sometimes yeah. that is exactly what it is. Happy to take it. TV. And yeah. funny enough, it was my only interview, my first and only one, and I, they just said... And you smashed it. No, nah, well, funny you say that, in the email, yeah. the first thing I read is, you're not successful in the overnight oh, runner. Oh, oh. Oh, but oh like, that is not ideal. No, <laughs> and you're just you're sitting there like, oh no, I don't know what to do now. Yeah. You don't know what I've applied for. No. And then at the bottom, it just says, well, no, actually, he gave a, a review of the interview, and I was like, there's nothing bad going on. Yeah. Like, there usually there's a reason. Like, they can give you some feedback yeah. or something. Yeah. What's going on? Then I just see there's a vacant part time runner. Would you like it? And I just went. Hey. Get and you're like, never you mind, I am the legend I thought exactly. I was. And yeah. then, yeah, just kind of a few weeks after that, funny enough, it was actually when the day the Queen died, I got oh, offered oh, full-time. <laughs> Sorry, Liz. Um. <laughs> yeah, the day she passed away, I actually got offered full-time and oh, just wow. been non-stop kind of That's working. That's amazing. What are you working towards? What is your dream? What is, mm. like, do you sit at home at night and you're like, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to do that? Like, what is it? Currently, right now, I'm just getting into what we call MCR, which is short for machine room. And we have about eight of them across all our buildings. Oh, wow. And oh, kind of two of them are audio based. One of them mm. only has like one person. The other has about six people. So I'm just kind of oh, waiting for an opportunity to open up cool. there. So and, niche. I know. Yeah. <laughs> You'll do it, Lewis. Thank well, you so much no for problem. speaking to us. Well, I have every lovely. faith you're going to be in the audio room in no time, hopefully. right? But hope hopefully so. you'll be back in talking to us all about your new adventure. No problem. Now, now it's time, time for Quick Talk. Talk. The UK government is to consider whether or not to ban the social media app TikTok on any UK and US government issued device. They have looked at the potential vulnerability of data and confidential information which is stored on these devices. Lots of TikTok users rely on the service for their full-time income. If TikTok were to get banned on public devices, this could create a huge problem and increase the need for new jobs as TikTok careers would go down the drain. Also, one billion people use TikTok every day. They would need to find another platform. TikTok's parent company, ByteDance, is an organisation which is designed to collect data with artificial intelligence. The UK government believes that the Chinese government could ask for this data captured by TikTok, which it is illegally allowed to do. Knowing that even having TikTok downloaded on your mobile device is constantly collecting data from your phone and other apps, would banning TikTok in the UK really be such a bad thing? 
ChatGPT is an artificial intelligence tool that has become the latest craze among students for writing their essays and coursework. However, experts have raised concerns about the ethics and implications of using such tools in academia. The major risk with such a platform is that students could be tempted to use them to cheat the system. Hence, undermining the learning process is essential to understand that academic assignments are not just about passing exams, but also the process of learning, researching and communication skills development. While ChatGPT may be a useful tool for brainstorming ideas, grammar and spell checks, and even generating summaries, using it as a primary source of work for essays and assignments is not legal. This kind of cheating could lead to the loss of integrity for individual students and institutions. Experts advise that academic institutions should provide students with other ample writing skills to use and the dangers of using ChatGPT. The use of ChatGPT may seem like an easy way out, but in the long run, it could potentially ruin an academic career. Also, this whole news story on ChatGPT was written by ChatGPT. Taylor Swift's new album, Midnights, which came out in October of 2022, has encouraged a huge tour involving her 10 albums. There is a 44 song track list resulting in each concert lasting three hours, which also has appearances of special guests. Called the Eras Tour, it is designed to show Taylor's journey staggering through all of her 10 albums, so her audience feels caught up with her past, present and future music. Many fans late last year were struggling to secure tickets with Ticketmaster and experienced with so many issues that the Department of Justice had to step in as many fans were unable to buy tickets. However, as many fans were extremely excited and thought her show was amazing, there was some controversy that Taylor Swift copied a famous musician called Scissor with extreme similarities to her entrance to the show. Well, it's official, Netflix's all-time most-watched TV show, Stranger Things, is coming to London's West End at the end of the year. The West End show, which is called Stranger Things, The First Shadow, is a spin-off prequel which was written by one of Stranger Things writers, Kate Treffery, and directed by three-time award-winning director, Stephen Daldry, who is an executive producer of, for the Netflix TV series, The Crown. The play has a whole different story to tell where audiences will watch the town of Hawkins in the 1950s where it will feature characters like Jim Hopper, Joyce and Bob Newby shown as being high schoolers. The creators of, pop the, popular, sorry, the, creators of the popular series The Duffer Brothers have said that the upcoming West End show is something that they never had expected and were shocked that they were able to make it happen. We at Real Talk advise that if you're a fan of the show you must go and see the play. That, that was Quick Talk! talk. Now to end the show, we have Valentine playing live in the studio. Woo!